This is Dr. D. Kandar Basha working as Associate Professor in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundikal Hyderabad. Today we are going to discuss the interfacing of the memory to 8086 microprocessor under the course Microprocessors and Microcontrollers. In the previous sessions, we had a discussion on interfacing of 8086 with memory where we are considered two cases. In the first case, we are considered two chips of RAM and two, two chips of ROM with the same size. In the second case, we are considered two chips of ROM and two chips of RAM with different sizes of ROM and RAM. In this third case, we are going to be considered the number of chips of ROM and RAM with a different values. So the slides are prepared by referring the textbook, Advanced Microprocessors and Peripherals, authors K. M. Burchandi and A. K. Ray, publication Tata Micravel Hill Education. So first we will see the memory organization. So each memory chip contains 2 to the power of n number of locations where n indicates the number of address lines on the chip. So each location contains m bits where m is the number of bits in each memory location. So as we are considering 2 power n number of memory location and each memory location is m number of bits. So the size of the memory is indicated as 2 to the power of n cross m. So the first one indicates number of memory locations. The second parameter indicates size of each memory location. So let us consider a memory of size 8k cross 4 memory. Here the number of memory locations are 8k. So as it is 8k, this 8k we can write as 2 to the power of some value. 8 we can write as 2 to the power of 3 into 1k is equal to 2 to the power of 10, which we can write as 2 to the power of 3 plus 10, which will be raised to 2 to the power of 13, which indicates 13 address lines are required for accessing any one of the memory location. Now we will see the interfacing problem where we are going to be considered two 32k by 8 ROMs and four 32k by 8 RAMs. So the problem statement is interface two 32k cross 8 AP ROMs and four 32k by 8 RAM chips with 8086 microprocessor with a suitable addressing map. So given the number of RAMs are 2 in number and each are of 32k. So size of each RAM is 32k. As we have 2 RAM blocks, so the total memory is 32k plus 32k which will use as 64k. So now we will find out how many memory locations are required for accessing this 64k. So the total RAM size is 64k which we can write as 2 to the power of 6 into 2 to the power of 10 which will give size to 2 to the power of 16. So the number of address lines are required are 16, which are from A0 to A15. Next one is corresponding to RAM. And in the problem statement, we are given with 432K RAM, but in the memory chip organization, in any row, we can place only two memory blocks. Even though we have four RAMs, each memory block or each memory row we can consider with only two memory blocks. So, in that perspective, we will consider out of four rows, four RAMs, two will be placed in one row. So, size of each RAM is 32K. As we can place only two RAM chips in a row, the size of any row we can have is only 64K. The number of address lines we can calculate as by writing 2 to the 64k as 2 to the power of some value. 
64 we can represent as 2 to the power of 6, 1k we can write as 2 to the power of 10, which is 2 to the power of 16. So that means 16 address lines are required here that are from A0 to A15. So the number of address lines which are required for ROM is 16, that is from A0 to A15. For RAM also, A0 to A15. So this I can take as ROM blocks 1 and 2. This will take as RAM 1, 2 and these are RAM 3. So for accessing this, we require 16 address lines. For this one also 16 address lines. For this one also 16 address lines. That is from A0 to A. Now in the address mapping, first we need to find out the address mapping. In 8086 processor, we have total number of address lines are 20. That is from A0 to a19. Out of this, we require only 16 address lines that is from A0 to A15. The remaining blocks will be used for decoding purpose. In these 16 address lines, we will pass for finding out the minimum address and maximum address by writing each and every bit position as 0 for minimum value, 1 for maximum value. So, if you write zeros for each and every bit position for minimum address, 111 for maximum address. So, how about A16 to A19? These are used for a decoding purpose. So, if you observe here, if I place any address A0 to A15, that address may be contained within these 16 fields, that is A0 to A15. That address may be corresponding to RAM 12 or RAM 1234. So, for differentiating this, we need addition lines that we are going to be used by A16 to A19. Similarly, for RAM, for each row, we can place 16 address lines we can use for accessing any one row of the RAM. That is from A0 to A15. A19 to A16 are used for decoding purpose. So, from A0 to A15, we can pass each and every bit as 0. And from A0 to A15, we can pass 111 for each and every value entry. So, for accessing any memory RAM, as we know, 16 address lines, we will pass for finding out minimum address by putting each and every bit is equal to 0. For maximum address, we will put each and every bit is equal to 1. The remaining address lines, that is from A16 to A19, these are used for decoding purpose. Now, we will combine all the memory addresses for 2 RAM blocks and 4 RAM blocks. So, here, the first space we can use for any one of the block. Second, second space is one kind of block, third, third space is one kind of block. As we have three rows, for selecting any one row, we require at least two bits. If I have only two rows, we can make use of only one bit. As we have three rows, any one bit configuration we can have from A16 to A17. As A16 and A17 are corresponding to two bits, we can have four different cases, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So, out of these four cases, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, any three patterns we can make use. But here, we will use 1, 1 for ROM. So, why we have to provide this one as 1, 1 means, whenever you press a reset or power on, the CS and IP value will be generated as FFFF0H. This is the address which will be generated on power on the system or microprocessor or whenever reset. So, this address should be given to ROM. If you observe the higher bits as it is F, F indicate all the bits as 1. So, that is why this 1 1 we go for choosing ROM blocks. What about RAM blocks? Which address space we can use? So, out of 4 configuration, 1 1 is utilized. The remaining three combinations, either 00, 01 or 10, we can use for ROM. 
But here, for consecutive memory location, we are going to give the nearest value for 1, 1. That is 1, 0 and 0, 1. So, these space are used for four memory chips of RAM. 0, 0 is a don't care. Whenever these two bits are 0, 0, no bit will be selected or no memory chip will be selected. Now, here we are map the address space from A0 to A17, A18, A19 is left out. So, what is the value we can pass here is, again as these two are two bits, we can have any four combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, as FF, FF0 address, we have to provide for ROM, as the higher order bits are F, we are going to be provide these values as 1. So, these bits A17, A16 are used for differentiating either ROM or RAM. A18, A19 we can use any address space. So, as we need to give the continuous address memory location, we will allocate all these A18, A19 with 1. In the memory address space, this is the pattern which we got. So, the address 1, 1, 1, 1. In the hexadecimal, 4 bits are grouped together. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this will be corresponding to 0. These 4 corresponding to 0 hexadecimal. 0, 0, 0, 0 corresponding to 0 hexadecimal. 0, 0, 0, 0 corresponding to 0 hexadecimal. Whereas 1111 will corresponding to F. So the starting address is F0000H. The higher order bits address is 1111 will group as one bit that is F. The next four bits 1111 corresponding to F. 1111 corresponding to F. 1111 corresponding to F. 1111 corresponding to F. So, the maximum address space is FF, FF, F. Address, higher order address for RAM. So, this memory space that is from F000 to FF, FF, F, it is allocated for two memory chips of RAM. Whereas for RAM blocks, row 1, we are going to give the address is 1110, which is equivalent to E. 0, 0, 0, 0 corresponding to hexadecimal digit to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 hexadecimal corresponding to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 corresponding to hexadecimal 0, again 0, 0, 0, 0 corresponding to hexadecimal 0. So the address E0000 corresponding to the starting address and the end address is 1110 which is equivalent to E. 1111 1, corresponding to F, 1111 1, 1, 1, corresponding to F, 1111 1, 1, 1, corresponding to F, 1111 1, 1, 1, corresponding to X and S1. So the higher address is E, F, 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 F. So the ROM blocks 1 and 2 we can have from E, 0, 0, 0, 0, H2, E, F, 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 H. Whereas ROM block 3 and 4, the address space is given as 1101, one, which is equivalent to D. Next, 0000 zero, 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 corresponding to 0, 0000 zero, 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 corresponding to 0, 0000 zero, 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 corresponding to 0, 0000 zero, 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 corresponding to 0. So, the starting address we can have is D000H. Zero, 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 and the higher order address is 1101. One, which is equivalent to D1111, which is corresponding to hexadecimal F, 1111, corresponding to hexadecimal digit F, 1111, corresponding to hexadecimal F, 1111, corresponding to hexadecimal F. So the end address we can have is D, F, 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 F. So the address space for ROM blocks 1 and 2 is E0000, EFFFF. The remaining two blocks we can have the address from D0000H to 
D F F F F H. So the address space for two thirty-two K by eight EP ROMs or ROMs is given as F zero 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 H two F F F F F H. Whereas two thirty-two K by eight RAMs is given as E zero 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 H two E F F F F H. The remaining two thirty-two K by eight ROMs is given the address is from D zero 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 H two. D F F F F H. So now we have can place the two memory chips in a row. This is RAM block one, RAM block two, RAM block one, RAM block two, RAM block three, RAM block four. The RAM blocks which you have placed on right hand side, these are even address memory banks. The RAM blocks which are placed on left hand side, those are odd address memory blocks. So when our the address A zero is equal to zero, it will corresponding to even address bank, and A zero is equal to one, it is odd address map. Next one is B H G bar is equal to zero, that is bus I enable. This will differentiate either we are having the data of size eight bits or sixteen bit transaction. When B H G bar is equal to zero, the upper eight bits are using. When B H G bar is equal to zero, corresponding to either it may be sixteen bit data transfer or upper eight bits only. When B H G bar is equal to one, it will correspond to lower eight bits. So for selecting any one of these memory chips, two control signals are very very important. That is A zero and B H G bar. So these two lines will give us. Either it is sixteen bit data transfer or eight bit data transfer from even address memory bank or odd address memory bank. Next, to select either it is ROM or RAM block one or RAM block two, we have two address lines we are reserved. That is A sixteen and A seventeen. So by using A sixteen, A seventeen, and B H G bar and A zero, we are going to specify what is the size of data transfer and what is the functionality or significance we will specify. As four control signals are there. Sixteen combinations will get. Out of these sixteen bits, whenever A sixteen and A seventeen, this is A seventeen, this is A sixteen. Whenever A sixteen and A six seventeen corresponding to zero zero, it indicates no memory chip will be selected. So the remaining two bits are don't get. So no memory chip will be selected. Whenever A seventeen, A sixteen are corresponding to zero one. This will specify it is corresponding to a RAM blocks three and four. So if B H G bar A zero is equal to zero zero, it indicates both even and odd address data will be takes place from a RAM block. So as we have placed. The RAM blocks. This I'll take as the RAM block one, two. This is block three, block four, block five, and block six. So we are going to select both B five and B six. That is chip select five and chip select six. Whenever B H G bar A zero is equal to zero one, zero indicates upper eight bits. Where we have the upper eight bits at even address. So only This is A zero, B H G bar. So when B H G bar is equal to one, it indicates the lower eight bits, and A bar is equal to zero, that means it indicates even address. So which selection will be takes place? Chip select six. One zero, one indicates odd address, zero indicates upper eight bits. 
one one it is not valid so no memory chip will be selected here when are these two bits are that is a17 a16 are corresponding to 10 these are corresponding to ram blocks 1 and 2 bhg bar a0 is equal to 00, 0 it will select both even and odd address bank that is chip select 3 and chip select 4 will be enabled 0, 01 only even address ram block is selected that is cs4 10 odd address that is cs3 will be selected chip select 3 11 one, no memory chip will be there. Next, whenever A17, A16 or 11, they will be corresponding to ROM blocks as we have two ROM blocks, ROM block 1 and ROM block 2. So, 00, 0 16 bit address, both even and odd address will be selected, that is chip select 1 and chip select 2. 0, 01 only even address will be selected, that is CS2. 10 odd address, that is only block 1 will be selected. 11 one, one, no memory will be selected. So, for selecting the interfacing system or for CS1 and CS2, which are corresponding to RAM block 1 and 2, we have the BHG bar and A0 and the remaining control signals A19, A2, A16. So, this is the interfacing circuit which are used for chip select. So, what is chip select means to enable this particular block. Similarly, CS2 it is for enabling this particular block. So, when CS1 will be executed is, the CS1 will be enabled as it is a active low signal, so we have to pass G. So, whenever it is enabled, so what could be the transaction is, either it may be 16 bit data transfer or upper 8 bits from the odd address. So, these are corresponding to ROM block 1. Next, chip select 2 whenever it is 0 that indicates it is enabled. When it will be enabled is either it may be a 16 bit data transaction or lower 8 bits with even address. Then the ROM block 2 will be selected. Next here we have a RAM, two RAMs we have placed in a row. One is 32K, another row 32K. Here the chip select signals are CS3 bar and CS4 bar. These two are active low signal. The interfacing here you can see where A17 is 0, 1 combination as it is 0, 1, these two are 1, 1. We have placed bubble for A17. So when the CS3 bar is equal to 0, that is enabled state, what indicate is the 16 bit data transfer or upper 8 bits from odd address which are corresponding to a RAM block 1 and 2. Next, the CS4 is equal to 0 that indicates it will enable the RAM block 1 2. When it will be take places, either it is 16 bit data transfer or lower 8 bits from the even address, in that case, a RAM block. 2 will be selected, which is nothing but CS4. The next one is corresponding to the ROM block 3 and 4, where it is enabled for 1, 1, 1, the 0 combination. That is why bubble is placed here. This is CS5. CS5 will be enabled, that is, it will have 0 for 16 bit data transaction or the upper 8 bits from the odd address, then the RAM block 3 will be enabled. The CS6 bar is corresponding to the RAM block 4 and it is enabled when the CS6 is equal to 0 as it is active low signal. So, when it will be selected is whether it is a 16 bit data transaction or lower 8 bits from even address, then a RAM block 4 will be selected. So, these are the interfacing circuits which are required for enabling any one of the memory chips. So, thank you. In this session, we have discussed the interfacing of memory with 8086 processor. So, under this course, this is the third session. We are having the discussion on memory interfacing where 
in this session we have discussed the ram and ram of same size but with a different number of chips we are considered two ram chips and two ram chips thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates